Hey guys, and welcome to part three of my 3D integration tutorial mini series where I will show you step by step how you can create awesome effects like flying 3D bullets, UFOs and dissolving people into crows. In the last part of the series I discussed step one of that process and took you along on an actual shoot. If you missed it you can check it out right here. Today I'm going to cover step two of that process, 3D camera tracking. In the last part we filmed our footage, wrote down all of our camera settings and scene measurements and recorded a sphere map. So is it time to add our 3D objects yet? If you have a scene with a moving camera like the UFO scene we filmed, you will first have to track your footage using a 3D camera tracker. The 3D camera tracker will analyze your footage and try to figure out where your camera was and how it was moving in relation to all the objects in the scene. It then reverse engineers a virtual camera that matches the position and movement of the camera that was used to actually film your footage. We can then take this virtual camera and export it directly into our 3D program. If you own After Effects CS6, you're in luck because CS6 includes a great inbuilt 3D camera tracker. If you have an earlier version, you can use Mocha for After Effects, which is included as a separate program. Alternatively, you can use a third party tool like Buju to do the tracking. Now let's jump into After Effects so I can show you how to do 3D camera tracking. I have the footage for the UFO effect we filmed in the last part of this tutorial here. As you know, this shot includes a camera pan and a tilt up towards the sky. We now need to track this footage to recreate the data to describe the camera movement so we can get this data into our 3D program to correctly match up our shots. I am going to use the inbuilt 3D camera tracker for this tutorial, but no matter which tracker you use, the theory should still apply. Go to the Effects and Presets tab, search for the 3D camera tracker effect and apply it to the layer you want to track. The 3D tracker will analyze your footage and create a large number of 2D track points to trace all the visual elements in your scene. It will then solve this cloud of 2D track points to create a virtual camera that matches the movement of the camera used to film the footage. As part of this step, it will also convert the 2D track points into 3D track points based on the calculated depth information. This can take a while depending on the length of your footage and the power of your CPU. So while this is going, let's have a quick look at the actual parameters for the tracker. You can specify the type of shot you are analyzing to assist the 3D camera tracker. If you zoomed in and out during filming, you probably want to set this to a variable zoom. I am going to leave it on fixed angle of view since my focal length did not change and I trust the camera tracker will automatically detect it properly. A little further down, you can determine which track points to show. You can determine whether you want to see the original 2D track points or the final solved 3D track points. Under the advanced twisty, there's one parameter that I find especially important and that is the average error. This text field will be populated once your tracker is done and it will indicate to you how accurately the 3D tracker managed to map your scene. A value below 1 usually means the tracker managed to get good grip on your camera. A value above 1 could indicate problems with the mapping and you might want to have a look at your scene and potentially reanalyze your footage. If you do need to tweak the tracking data, you can also change the solve method used. I usually get good results with the auto detect option, but you can specify what type of footage you have. This again will hopefully help the 3D tracker to give you a better result in the end. Once the camera tracker has completed its job, you can scrub through your footage and you should see a large number of brightly colored markers in your scene. These markers should remain attached to all of the objects in your scene throughout the shot. If that is not the case, you may have to tweak your 3D camera tracker parameters and reanalyze your footage until you get a clean track. Note that if your footage includes crazy fast camera movement, the tracker may just not be able to figure out what you did, so keep that in mind when shooting your scene. Now that we have all this tracking data, we can recreate the camera. You can simply click the Create Camera button in the 3D Camera Tracker effect. A new camera will appear in your composition and, assuming your tracking data was spot on, the camera should execute the exact same movement you did with your real life camera. This process of matching up real life footage with a virtual environment is referred to as match moving. If you cannot see the track points on the footage, just make sure you select the track layer and select the 3D Camera Tracker effect. If you move your mouse over the footage, you should see a number of targets appear. The camera tracker will use triplets of track points to define a plane in 3D space. However, this is not quite working as expected. All the targets are flat and we can see a note saying no depth from a tripod pan solve. Because our camera was fixed on a tripod and did not physically move around the scene, the 3D camera tracker is not able to derive depth information from the cluster of 2D track points. 
It therefore fails to create and place any 3D track points correctly in the scene. To show you what I mean, let's quickly jump to a different example where the camera is actually moving. I have a scene here where I walk with a handheld camera through a street in Melbourne. I have applied the same 3D camera tracker to my footage. The first thing you'll notice is that the track points are not all the same size like in the UFO shot. Because the camera moved around during the shot, the 3D tracker can determine depth information and create the proper 3D track points. The smaller the track points are, the further away they are from the camera. The next thing you'll notice is that when you move your mouse over the tracked footage, the targets that appear are now properly placed within that 3D scene. The awesome thing you can do with properly tracked footage is you can easily integrate other elements in After Effects into your scene. Let's create some text in the middle of the street. Move your mouse until you find a target that matches the surface of the street. This one will do. Right click on it and select create text and camera. The option to also create a camera is shown because we haven't yet created one. A new camera and a new text element have been added to the scene. Note that the text layer is 3D, so we can position it nicely to sit along the street direction. Now watch this. As you scrub through your footage, the text will appear to be part of your actual scene. How cool is that? You can add all sorts of elements to your scene directly in After Effects once you've tracked your footage. You could even blow up that motorcycle. Leave a comment below if you want a tutorial on how to blow up that motorcycle. Let's return to our UFO scene. We now need to add a few markers into the scene so we can identify a few of the visual elements once we've exported this data into our 3D program. We do not have depth information because the camera did not move during the shot. If we created markers in our street scene where we have depth information, the exported markers would have a proper 3D position. For this scene where we have no depth information, our markers will only follow the visual elements if seen from the camera's point of view. However, for this shot where we will be adding the UFO way above the tree line, we really just need to be able to tell where the hole in the foliage is. Select any track point you care about, right click on it and create a null object. I am going to create four null objects around the opening in the trees where I want the UFO to appear. Remember to give your null objects useful names so you can identify them once they've been imported into your 3D program. I'm also going to create a null object to mark the spot where I'm standing just in case. Now we're finally ready to export our data. There's a free script available called After Effects 3D Export that you can use to export camera and layer data from After Effects into 3ds Max, Maya and Lightwave. You can find it on the After Effects Enhancer forum and I've included a link in the description of this video. For Cinema 4D users, Maxon actually provides a free plugin that you can use to export your After Effects data into Cinema 4D and again you can find the link in the description of this video. Since I am going to export my data into 3D Studio Max, I've downloaded the After Effects 3D export script to my hard drive. To run a script inside of Adobe After Effects, simply go to File, Scripts, Run Script File. Locate the file you downloaded and double click on it to run it. A small interface will pop up where you can specify the program you want to export to as well as a few export options. I will select to export to 3ds Max and under Options you can select to have all of the objects in your composition centered around the origin and define a world scale. The world scale determines how much the positions of your exported layers are scaled up or down in relation to the origin. You may have to try a few different options depending on your scene and tracking data but for me the 1 to 1 scale usually gives me pretty good results. Now select the layers you want to export. I'm going to select my camera and all the null objects I've created. Then click on Export. The file has now been exported to my desktop and I'm just going to drag it into the folder where I want it. After Effects 3 export script has created an .ms file which is ready for import into 3D Studio Max. You can actually open this file in a text editor and you should be able to find all of your layers in there by name. Just note that any spaces from the layer names have been stripped out just so it works in the script. And with that we are ready to take our footage and the camera data we exported into our 3D program and set up our virtual scene. I will cover this in the next part of this tutorial. I really hope you enjoyed the third part of my 3D integration tutorial mini-series. As always, please leave any comments, questions or suggestions in the section below. I will put up the next part of this series soon, so please subscribe if you want to see more or come and stalk me on Facebook or Twitter. Until next time, I will see you later.